Number one, oxidation number of nitrogen. There are two nitrogens in the compound here. Nitrogen in the ammonia, ammonium side is minus three. The nitrogen in the nitrate side is plus five. And when they become N2O, the nitrogen each one is plus one on average. So minus three to plus one it increases by four units. Plus five to plus one decreases by four units. So they want the changes. So the change will be increased by four, decreased by four. Number two is more straightforward. Addition of molten cryolite. Um, it is actually to reduce the melting point of the whole electrolyte so that you use less energy. Number three. This is a redox reaction between Tl plus and VO3 minus. So what you can do is set up a, a ratio of their, reac their reaction in or according to the number of moles. So use the information here to find out the moles of the reactants. Okay, for Tl plus we have 0 0.003. For VO3 minus, we have 0 0.002, and then we simplify to the simplest ratio. Once we have the ratio of the reacting species, see if you can find any half equations for any side. In this case, we know that TL plus becomes TL3 plus, so we can actually have this half equation. So, definitely one of the species we will have the half equation okay, in this case is tl plus once we have the information here we can actually have we can express it in a uh, statement form so three moles of tl plus will lose six moles of electrons because three moles are involved and for every one mole two moles of electrons are lost and where do these six moles of electrons go to? The six moles of electrons will be gained by these two moles of VO3+. Plus. We can simplify further. One mole of VO3+, plus will then gain three moles of electrons. What will this affect the oxidation number? It will mean that if you gain electrons, your oxidation number will decrease. If you gain 3 moles of electrons, it will decrease by 3 units. At the start, the oxidation number of your vanadium in VO3 plus is plus 5. And since it drops by 3 units, the new oxidation number will be plus 2. So start off systematic, figure out the reacting species figure out the ratio of the moles that they react with, find out how many electrons are transferred from one to the other using half equation, and then find out the other species whether it gains or loses a certain number of electrons. You will increase the, or decrease the oxidation number accordingly, and then you have your new oxidation number. Number 4, element X forms X- minus that can be oxidized by acidified potassium manganate. So, it is giving us a clue that perhaps it is uh, come from group 7. Okay? Or most likely it will not be a metal. So, if we look at the options that we have, we can see that the big jump for the first option is from the first to the second ionization energy this gives us a clue that it could be from group 1 the jump for the option B is from the third to the fourth it means that it is from group 3 the next one the jump is from group 2 if you can't tell by that one way to do it is 
use what they suggest the data booklet okay and if you match up all the oxidation numbers we actually have all these elements so especially for C where you can't really justify is it a big enough jump or not well one way you can do is use a data booklet okay, that might be relevant for this question and for D it is actually for iodine the numbers so since we are looking for one that most likely comes from group 7 forms X minus ions D will be our answer number five we have two experiments conditions are almost the same except for the concentration of one of the reactants among the two equation uh, two experiments here we use 0 0.02 moles per dm cube of sodium thiosulfate here we use 0 0.05 moles of sodium thiosulfate so this one is more concentrated we will expect the second one to be a faster reaction because they will be able to collide more frequently okay, because they have more particles per volume the activation energy doesn't change because there's no catalyst used the collision are not more violent because we do not increase the temperature okay and again the reaction doesn't proceed by a different pathway because there's no catalyst used number six which one will have the lowest activation energy if we look down the options some options involve bond breaking purely some involve bond breaking and bond forming for D there are two radicals so it's bond formation and these two radicals are very very reactive so they require the lowest activation energy among all of them it's purely bond forming Number 7, PVNRT, which one will give us the most accurate value of M, MR? So, the MR is actually hidden inside this equation. PV mass over MRRT. So, when will we get the most accurate value of MR? Is when we carry out the experiments under ideal gas conditions. And when do we have ideal gas conditions? when pressure is low temperature is high number eight which solid contains more than one kind of bonding ice we have covalent bonds oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms the covalent bonds and from a molecule water molecule to another water molecule we also have intermolecular attraction the hydrogen bonding so there are more than one kind of bonding for ice copper is just metallic diamond is covalent uh, magnesium oxide is ionic number nine we have a gas that occupies the volume a certain mass at a temperature and a pressure so and they ask us to use this equation PVNRT we try to put in all the information with MR as the subject so mass grams gas constants 300 cubic centimeter no, uh, 300 kelvins your pressure must be in Pascal your volume must be in cubic meters for your gas constant 8.31 to be valid so convert it to Pascal convert it to cubic, centimeter, uh, cubic meters and then you have your equation and your MR will be 83.9 and then you check your data booklet Krypton will be the one that is closest to it.
Number 10, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia and then we form a equilibrium table in terms of number of moles. So at the start we have 1, 3 and 1.98. Under equilibrium we have 1.64 nitrogen. Okay, so what we can do with this information is find a change. Starting with 1, one we get 1.64, that means it has actually increased by 0 0.64. Hydrogen will be 3 times of 0.64. So we have 1.92. It will be also increasing because it's on the same side as our nitrogen. For ammonia, it will be twice the amount of nitrogen. So 0.64 times 2, 1.28. But since nitrogen is being formed, ammonia is used up. So from here, we look at the changes and we can find equilibrium 3.92, 0.7. These are the equilibrium amounts. And then we put inside our KC, equivalent const equilibrium constant, okay, ammonia raised to the power 2, and, uh, and nitrogen, hydrogen raised to the power 3. Now I have a little issue with this question because they did not specify the volume of the react the vessel. They only say it's a sealed vessel. Because you must realize that this is number of moles. And if you're talking about KC, you're talking about concentration. So actually, we should be dividing the moles divided by the volume of the vessel, which is not given here. Now, sometimes the volume doesn't matter because the power of the the power actually cancels each other out from the top and bottom. But in this case, the power actually didn't cancel each other out. Okay, we have v square on top and v to the power four below. So actually, this question um, is not really complete without the volume of the vessel. Okay, but if we go along with the numbers that we have, we can assume that the volume is 1, and then we'll end up with option A. Okay, so a slight issue with this question, they should specify the volume of the vessel, especially if the volume, the power of the volume do not cancel out top and bottom. Okay, if they say it's 1, uh, then it doesn't really matter. So in this case, we go with the best option that we have.